Threadheads, welcome back. I'm gonna try this live thing again. So, just give a minute for a couple people to join. I guess while we're just getting started, we will start by maybe just prepping a shank. So, this is the hobo spay that we're gonna to tie today. This is an olive and cream or light tan variation. This is one that I'm doing up for a client right now. If you can't hear me, let me know. And if you pop in, just uh, post a quick comment, say hello, and I'll give you a shout out. If you have any questions while we're going through this, just uh, type them in the live chat. I've got it running in front of me here, so I'll take a look every once in a while and see if we can't answer your questions. So this is just what we're going to start with. This is your fly tying shank. This is a 30 millimeter shank, and we're just going to add a wire leash. This is a 20 pound braided wire, coated braided wire. So something like tiger wire or beetle on, um, that sort of thing should work pretty good. So we'll just start off by putting a shank in the vise here. And I'm going to use a heavier 210 denier thread to attach the leash and I've got this wire pre-cut at about three and a half inches and I'm just gonna measure that out I'm gonna bend these tips back just so that they're secure I want to make sure that that has uh, enough room that I can put a hook on there when I need to all right so we'll just start by putting a base layer of thread. And this is a 210 denier thread, the flat wax nylon that I'm using. And basically the reason for that um, is just, well, I'm using a chartreuse. It doesn't really matter what color you're using. I use the chartreuse just because it uh, was on on uh, closeout, so I bought a bunch of spools, but it's all going to be covered up anyway. If I'm going to use it for something where this color matters, then I'll change that up, but I'm going to completely cover this with dubbing anyhow, so no biggie. So I'm just going to lengthen that loop just a touch. Alright, we'll tie that down just like to flip that up and take these two tag ends and I'll push those back a couple wraps and we'll tie those down now I normally add a uh, liberal coat of head cement on here and let that dry. So I guess we'll go ahead and do that. And what I use for this is just some Sally Hansen's. I usually just refill my bottle, so there's no label on this one anymore. So I'll put a pretty heavy coating on there, and then I'm going to put it aside and let it dry. And I usually do up a couple dozen of these when I don't have anything better to do. But... We'll just do this one today. All right, so I got one prepared ahead of time here. So we'll just throw that in the jaws. All right, now I'm going to switch over to my UTC thread. I'm just using a UTC 140. And this one is the olive color. And I like using the UTC for this pattern just because it creates a 
nice smooth head. The only thing with that is it can be a little bit slippery sometimes on the front. All right. So first thing we're going to add on here is a little bit of dubbing. This is some custom dubbing that I made. So this one is half part olive wool or two parts olive wool, one part seal olive, and then one part gold brown ice dub. So I'll usually put the recipe on there and I might actually have a small sample taken out and kept aside somewhere as well. So we're just gonna take a little bit here. I'm gonna start by just dubbing a little bit of that onto our thread. And we're just gonna make a bit of a butt here. And I want this to be fairly loose, doesn't have to be really clean. It's gonna get pulled out and that's totally fine. So next we're going to add in a rib, and for that I'm going to use a little bit of Beauty French. This is the oval tinsel and medium silver. Medium is a good size for this. The small size is a little bit too small. The medium is about just right in the large. It's a little bit clunky for this application. So I just tie this along the side of the shank, just towards me here. And we'll put a layer of thread down on the front as well. So I'm going to measure out about this much. That's where I'm going to leave for the head of my fly. So I'm going to tie the two marabou wings and um, some of the other materials on in this section. So the rest of this here, that's going to be dubbed as well. So for most colors, I'll put like a hot color here and then black dubbing up to here. But for this one, I'm going to do all olive. So again, we're just going to heavily dub this. Again, if you guys have any problems seeing this on screen, just let, let me know. All right, fatten that up. Then I just like to pull that little bit of dubbing here out of the way. So on St. Pierre's Hobo, he used a guinea fowl feather but i find them rather difficult to find in the size that i need so what i usually end up using is either a nice neck hackle or decent uh, saddle hackle so i got a whiting american olive grizzly cape here it's been pick through a little bit but we're gonna find a hackle in here we're gonna use that one for this fly only thing with the whiting American is you can kind of see this middle stem is a little bit thicker whereas something like this saddle hackle it's just a strung saddle it's got much thinner stem so it's gonna be much easier to wrap. It's going to have less uh, likelihood to break, but this is still fairly pliable up to about here. And then you'll be able to kink it without too much problem. So let's just go ahead and we're going to take some of the fibers off the stem here. And what I do is I just Make sure the curve is to the back and on the inside. 
and we'll just tie that down and then I like to fold that stem back just to make sure that it's locked in place and we'll trim off the excess so now we're just going to palmer this backwards so we're basically tying the body of a woolly bugger here so we'll just palmer that back make sure that all the uh, fibers of that hackle are facing forward now we catch that with the silver oval tinsel and we'll just wind that back through just want to make sure that you wiggle that through as you go forward and then once we get out to the bare shank we'll lock that down with a couple of wraps and I just like to fold that back just to make sure it's really locked in there and then you can just trim off the tag that feather there okay so now we've got a tan feather here or a light cream feather this one has a really nice thin stem and this is part of the stuff that I did in a prior video where I sorted through some white marabou and this is one of the plumes that I pulled out for dyeing. I didn't get to do the dyeing on camera but um, anyways that's the result. It's a nice long fibered thin stemmed piece of marabou and that's kind of ideal for this kind of pattern because everything's just gonna like flow back over this body. So this kind of acts a bit like uh, a bit of a a frame for the fly so everything's gonna just fly right back over this and when these get wet they'll retain some of their shape so you'll get a bit of the teardrop but for the most part you'll keep a lot of the shape of the fly and it's not going to completely collapse so this one has a little bit of a twist in the stem which not a big deal but we're just going to untwist it a little and make a tie-in point so I want to pull some of the fibers forward and most of them back just moisten the tip and we'll add a couple wraps there pull the tip back and tie it down so it's really locked in there now and we'll just trim off the tip. So now I'll take uh, the edge of my scissors here and I'm just gonna pull that along the stem. And we'll just wrap that. So we're just gonna palmer that forward slightly. Now for this next part, I usually use Rhea if I have it. It's uh, been fairly difficult to get lately. There's a few sources out there, but it's fairly um, short, the stuff I've been getting. So instead, I've been using a little bit of ostrich hurl. And if you don't want to use ostrich, you can use a little bit of flashaboo will work too. But we're going to use a bit of flashaboo as well. So let's do that first. So I'm going to take uh, about three strands of three or four strands of flashaboo. And I'm just going to make sure that it's all kind of gathered. Pull those feathers back and I'm going to take the flashaboo a little bit past where the marabou ends. 
couple wraps. I'll pull that across and then wrap it down along the other side. And then I'll just trim it off even on the back. So next I'm going to look for, let's see, I'm going to take about four pieces of ostrich hurl. I got some nice pieces here. So you can kind of see how those hang off the back of the fly. Add in a little bit of uh, tendril effect. So I'm going to take two. I'm going to tie them in at about the 10 o'clock position if you're looking at the front of the hook. So they'll tail off in this direction and then I'll tie the other ones at the two o'clock and they'll tail off in this direction. And when these get wet, the ostrich will collapse down. It'll look like a, uh, almost like a barbell on like a catfish or something like that. But it's uh, a little bit enticing for the fish. So we're just going to push those tips, the butt ends of the ostrich hurl, and we'll trim those off if we need. All right, so now we're gonna find a piece of olive. Again, I've got a nice piece of marabou here with a fairly thin stem. It's gonna peel back some of the plume off the bottom. I'm gonna make a tie-in point here. I only need about two or three wraps with this. I'll moisten the tip on that. Couple wraps to secure it. Pull that back. Trim that. Then again, we're just going to take the scissors and run them up along that stem just to fold back the fibers on the top of that feather and then we're gonna wrap that around just going forward a little bit and uh, making sure to pull all the fibers back as you wrap catch that stem up here Fold it back. Trim that off. If you want, it's not a bad idea just to take a little brush and pick out a little bit of that dubbing. A lot of that will come out as you're fishing it as well. So next we're going to take a little bit of Lady Amherst tail and uh, basically just want to tie a few of these around the fly. I typically do uh, between 8 and 12 pieces and I'll just do them on the quarters. So I want them kind of make sure that the shape of that follows the profile of the fly. So just set them in place here. And 
and then I'll fold those butt ends over, just keep them out of the way. If you want to add a few more you can just kind of gives a little break up to the monotone of the olive it's a nice little design all right I'll push those back out of the way okay so I'm just gonna come in here with the scissors push those back butt ends back out, make sure they're all cut, do the same on the top, so you can whip finish here if you like, I'm gonna add a little bit of jungle cock to this as well, so I've got a fairly decent cape, I'm gonna use some of my bigger eyes for this, and they don't have to be perfect eyes. These are fishing flies. So I've got two eyes. What I do, or nails, what I do is I just grab them and I'll sandwich them together. Just make sure that the enamels are kind of lined up. And then I'll look on the fly where I want to place them. And I'm going to strip the fibers down below I'll tie one on my side here a couple wraps I'll tie one on the far side and then we're going to fold these stems back just locks the jungle cock in place. Then you can just give a gentle tug. And those will come off. Well, your jungle cock will come right out. <laughs> so let's unwind that. I'm going to redo that one. So obviously that wasn't tight enough, that one. Try it again. Maybe it's just a thick stem. All right, we'll just trim that off. Alright, I guess that's the fun of doing it live, right? We'll just try that one more time. So if you do have some smaller eyes without stems, you can tie them in like this. You can see the profile of that now. Looks pretty, pretty teardrop shaped once you pull all the marabou back. It's got a lot of profile in there. And so we're just gonna add a whip finish. Add a little bit of head cement. And 
And if you want a little bit extra on there, you can put a dab of solar res just to make sure that it's completely locked in. There you go, there's basic hobo spay. That's my variation of it. I'd like to thank everybody for stopping by to watch. And hopefully something you enjoyed. And hopefully this one went a little bit better than the first one. And if so, maybe we'll do a few more of these. If you want to leave your suggestions for flies that you'd like to see covered here in the future, just uh, put in the comments below. And until next time, this is Darren saying keep a hook in your vice. Cheers.